breach. All right. So look over to your neighbor and say, look at the guy, look at the guy speaking. Look at me. Look at me. I say, don't look at me because you, you might get hypnotized. <laughs> I need someone to look up uh, with a New King James Bible. Anyone who's got a New King James Bible, look up 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 8. I'm going to be speaking on uh, sin, and my, my, t- my title for this is called, My Sin? What's Your Sin? <laughs> so we got one right here. All right. I robbed other churches, taking wages from them to minister to you. <laughs> All right, now you all know Paul was a, a thief. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get offended. Get the Holy Spirit off you. <laughs> all right. Now we're going to go to the real scripture verse. Everyone turn to uh, Psalms 18. I can find it myself. Here we go. Psalms 18, verses 20 through 23. I'm going to read out of the Amplified Bible. The Amplified Bible reads it as, The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, my conscious integrity and sincerity with him. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. I can't remember what it For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his ordinances were before me, and I put not away his statutes from me. I was upright before him and blameless with him, ever on guard to keep myself free from my sin and my guilt. Like I said, the title of my message is My Sin, What's Your Sin? Come on. Question marks. Yeah, I have a question mark. So uh, we're going to talk about some, some pretty uh, notorious Bible characters here. <coughs> what made them them? We're going to start with King David. In uh, 2 Samuel chapter 11, it's, it says that King David was not out to battle where he should have been. It was the time of the year that kings went out to battle. And uh, instead of being out to battle, he was at home where he shouldn't have been. So his mind was not in the place he should have been. Right. Yeah. He wasn't fighting the battle he should have been fighting. Right. Because he wasn't fighting the battle he should have been fighting. <laughs> He was beaten down and with a, by his, in a mental state and let the enemy have a playground in his mind. Yeah. Yeah. He had thoughts. He, had, he was tempted. Yes. Come on. Amen. Come on. It, uh, we all know the story. He saw Bathsheba and uh, he's a pretty hot girl, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, of course he was tempted. Because <laughs> he wasn't where he should have been. He was looking at things he shouldn't have looked at. Come on. And... Uh, so we all know what happened. He gets some eyes for some girls. Uh, you know, what's up? Netflix and chill. He took things too far. She came over because he wanted her to come over. Naughty yeah. King David. And uh, we all know what happened. He screwed around. Let's say it like it's true. He screwed around. Yeah. And he ended up causing this woman to become pregnant. And so he has now got this child on his hands. Come on. So, I gotta cover this up, man. I'm the king, I can't look bad on. on my people. Come all right, on. what are you gonna do, what are you gonna do? Come on. Well, what he does is he has the Bathsheba's husband murdered. Yeah. yeah. He let one thing, one little temptation, mm-hmm. involve and evolve and evolve. Yes. Yeah. And progress to a place he should have never progressed. Yeah. He's a murderer. Yeah. And an adulterer. Yeah. King David, a guy, a man after God's own heart. Does that sound like a man after God's own heart? Well, not in that instance, because we all, again, like I said, he was not in the place he should have been. He was was not fighting the battle he should have been fighting. Yeah. Come on, yeah. God was not a great one. God still turned around his situation. He was still a great king. Yeah. Now, so let's, let's, let's look at Moses. In Exodus 2... 11, it tells us that Moses, the man who led the entire nation of Israel, 
out of bondage, out of slavery, out of captivity. Come on. This great man of God was a murderer. Well, what? How could that be? God can't use murderers. God can't use a murderer. God can't use an adulterer. Moses was out uh, in the, the towns where the, uh, the slaves were working, and he was, at this time, he was an adult. He knew he was the Hebrew by lineage. So he uh, starts getting a heart for these people because they're his people, which is a great thing. It's great to have a heart that beats, you know? And, uh, and uh, so he sees an Egyptian beating a Hebrew. And uh, what does he do? He looks both ways because I don't want to get caught. He went out and killed the Egyptian man, and he tried to hide his body. Yeah. Thinking, oh, no one saw it, so we're all good. So he goes out the next day, talks to some Hebrews that are fighting. He's like, hey, why are you fighting? Why are you fighting? The Hebrew says to him, uh, so you're going to hurt us like you killed that Egyptian? You're going to kill us too? Uh -oh. Come on. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Come on. He was content down. with hiding it until someone found out. He had murder in his heart. He had murder in his heart. Yeah. Because of this, he was afraid. He was afraid that the, the Pharaoh would, get, would kill him. And the Pharaoh would have killed him. So he fled to the wilderness for 40 years. <laughs> he spent 40 years of his life wasted, yeah. waiting for God to come to him, yes. come reveal on. something to him. He spent 40 years of his life wasted because of one act. Yeah. Yeah. And then he never got to the promised land because of another 40 years of the sins of the Israelites, of their fear. Yeah. Stacy touched on that earlier. Their fear kept them. Yep. From entering where they were supposed to yes. be. Yes, that's true. Amen. So that one act for Moses wasted 40 years of his life, and he could not enter the promised land that he was promised. Come on. Amen. Is anyone getting this? Yes. Yeah. Let's look at Abraham, the father of Israel, the guy where it all started. The guy where it all started. I'm going to take a drink. So just talk amongst yourself for uh, three seconds. <laughs> Abraham, the guy that Israel started with. This is the guy, the first guy, the chosen guy. God chose this guy. What was his problem? Well, Abraham didn't have a problem. He was, he was the father of the greatest nation ever. He was the father of the Jews. Come on. Jesus was a Jew. Right. Let me let me point something out to you. Abraham married his sister. That's kind of gross. Yeah. <laughs> it's not his sister. That's kind of gross. That's not why he was. Not, so this isn't the problem, but this is fate. That's kind of sick. <laughs> <laughs> so Abraham's traveling along with his wife, and. Uh, there's a there's a there's a famine in the land, so they're all headed to <coughs> Egypt because Egypt is going to save everybody like they normally do. And uh, this guy was a greedy coward. He's I'm just going to say he's a greedy coward, and he was a liar. If you know the story, he was willing to rent out his wife to the kings of other nations to the Pharaoh because he was afraid that they would kill him. He devised a plan to get out of this death, which was only fear in his mind. Come on. His brilliant plan was to lie to these kings or to the pharaoh in this instance to say that his wife was only his sister. And again, that was true as his half-sister, but he didn't tell the whole truth, so he was lying. He's a liar. Let's just say it like it is. And uh, so, they, so because she was beautiful, they were going to take her in his <laughs> mind regardless and kill him. So he devised a plan, you know, to just lie and say she's my sister. Well, he got, he got compensated pretty well. He, uh, this is where the greediness comes in. Out of this lying incident, he was uh, amassed some sheep, oxen, donkeys, camels, and servants, male and female. So, I mean, back in the day, he's, he's living pretty large at the time <laughs> because he's a liar. How many uh, politics? <laughs> you know, I'm always gonna go there. Got, you know, uh, making it off of lies. Let's not go there. <laughs> Let's not go there. So he was greedy. He was not only willing 
to make to let himself sin, he was willing to let his wife sin and potentially Come on. sleep with another man. Yeah. And in what instance is that ever right? So he was not only willing to make himself a liar, he was willing to make his wife a liar and an adulteress while he profits. While he profits. And if that wasn't enough, he's making the Pharaoh and the other kings sinners. Because they don't know it. They've been lied to, so they're believing the lie. Have you been lied to? Are you believe in the lie that the enemy's been in your mind Come saying on. things? Come on. Yeah. Has the enemy been in your mind yeah. saying things? Yeah. Come on. Come on. So he was willing to let th these other men and nations, by the way, because God brought a plague upon uh, Egypt at that time, be sinners. And this was not a one-time incident. This happened two different times he lied, and this exact scenario came out. By the grace of God, Sarah never actually committed this, the act by the grace of God, but it doesn't matter. Abraham was willing to let it go there yeah. because he was a coward. Yes. Yeah. Amen. So let's skip ahead to the New Testament people. Let's look at Peter. This one's going to be short. Not long like Abraham. Gosh, Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, the father of the Christian church, lied on three separate accounts. Oh, man. They asked if, if, uh, if he knew Jesus, if he was one of the disciples, because Jesus had been taken off to be crucified. Right. You all know that story. If you don't know that story, go read it. It's in the Bible somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so Peter was a liar, and he had a foul mouth. He cussed out those people. Yeah, in that last cool. attempt, he, in the last attempt to get him to confess, he cussed out those people, got belligerent and violent with those people. There's something poking at him. Come on. Paul was a religious zealot whose job it was to go to different towns and cities and find men, women, and children, and children, to bind them up in chains and deliver them to their deaths. Come on. Yeah. Sounds like another popular religion in the world today. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Not naming names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no names. Paul may not have actually killed these people with his own two hands, but he knew what he was doing. Sure. He, was in, he was intending for these people to die. He was right. consenting to their deaths. Right. Right. Paul was a murderer. Right. So how many murders have we got in here so far? Uh, we're starting to pile them up on here. Not looking good. Uh, are you glad that God was able to take Paul out of his religious zeal for darkness, let's just put it that way. He used that guy Come on. Yeah. and turned his religious zealousness yes. or however you want to say that, I ain't good at English. <laughs> ain't good at English. <laughs> he turned his his zeal for killing into his zeal for Christ. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Try. So I just want to point out uh, those are the sins of these major people in the Bible. We got David, King David, the greatest king of Israel. We got Moses. The Jews love that guy. <laughs> we got Paul. We got Peter. We got all these great men of God and their big mistakes. These are their sins. Murderers, liars, adulterers, thieves, greedy people. What's your sin? Come on. What's your sin? Mm. You know, they were liars and murderers. Maybe you've never murdered anybody. Come on. But who have you been killing with your mouth? Come on. Come on. There it is. On. There it is. Oh, no. Who have you been killing with your mouth? Come on. So what's your sin? Lying, stealing, porn, sexual sin, murder, religious arrogance, pride? It doesn't matter. The only thing that makes these uh, acts that these men did redeemable was the fact that they were able to change their hearts. Yeah. Because God intervened. Come on. God can intervene you don't have to change. Yeah. You have free will. Yes. If these men would have stayed in their past, they wouldn't be in the Bible. They wouldn't be written about. Yeah. Right. They'd be just like every other person right. in that time. Yeah. Forgotten about. Yep. Left in their sin, died into hell. Yep. yep. What is your sin? Why are you going to allow 
yourself to not step out of it. Yeah. Yeah. We all have something. We all have something. I'm preaching to me as much as I'm preaching to you. We all have something. So what is it? I just want to challenge you guys with that today. What's your sin? God can turn it around if you allow him to. Yeah. So just allow him to do it. Come on. Yeah. Yeah.